If you already own a Surface Pro, is the Surface Pro 6 good enough to upgrade? Microsoft recently introduced the Surface Pro 6 and we're actually finishing up our review, but we can answer a question today that you probably are wondering about. If you already own a Surface Pro, is the Surface Pro 6 worth it? Now, there are three generations of Surface Pros, three recent generations, and they're all pretty much functionally identical. What we have here is the Surface Pro 2017, and what we have here is the Surface Pro 6. Again, if they, weren't, if they were the same color, you probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference. There's two changes though with the Surface Pro 6. The first, obviously, is the color. This is the first time since, say, the Surface Pro 2 that the Surface Pro 6, or the Surface Pro, comes in black. The other change is what's inside of it. This has a seventh generation chip inside of it, and this has an, has an eighth generation core chip inside of it though essentially everything else again remains the same same dimensions same weight down to about the same down to about the ounce now just a quick microcosm of our review which i encourage you to read on pcworld.com this comes in this is a 12.3 inch tablet 2736 by 1834 again unchanged the price is 1199 for the tablet as what we this is what we have this is a core i5 with 8 gigabytes of ram but you also have to buy the type cover it doesn't come bundled again and it ranges from 129.99 to 159.99 this is actually the cheaper uh, type cover this ironically costs you hundred dollars more for the black configuration if you want the cheapest surface pro 6 buy the platinum color which is this color now inside of this is a 1.6 gigahertz core i5 8250u inside of this is a seventh generation core i5 this is actually a core i7 machine which we'll talk a little bit about later now we're not going to talk about the surface pro 4 that's an older machine but that has a sixth generation core chip inside of it basically that is a discontinued product at this point in time so we're in that sense we're talking to the people who already own it but you can't actually buy it let's talk a little bit about the differences in terms of performance because that is where the differences lie again functionally the same but what we did in terms of our review is we always review uh, the products using a suite of standard benchmarks. And there's probably three or four that we want to talk about here today. Now, the question you want to ask yourself is if I own a Surface Pro 4, do I want to own upgrade to a Surface Pro 6? And likewise, if I own a Surface Pro 2017, do I want to upgrade to? Here's what we need to consider. So PC Mark Home is sort of a middle of the road benchmark. It measures a little like gaming, a little web browsing, a little bit of video and so forth. And what we found is that for the Surface Pro 2017, there's only an 8% increase in performance if you go up to the 20 if you go up to the Surface Pro 6. But if you own a Surface Pro 4, it's a 27% boost. That's significant. Likewise, if you go and use the Cinebench benchmark, Cinebench is actually a uh, a benchmark that we use for rendering uh, a two-dimensional scenes uh, uh, using the 3D uh, capabilities of the chip. It's probably not something that you're going to use every day, but it's a great test for all the CPUs and all the threads. This has a quad-core chip inside of it. This has a dual-core chip inside of it. So you're going to see a substantial benefit from going to the Surface Pro 6 in that regard. In fact, you're going to see a 47% boost with this going to the Surface Pro 6 and an 88% boost going from the Surface Pro 4. So again, it's a pretty much a niche application, but if you are involved in doing a lot of rendering work, you probably want to make that upgrade. The third benchmark that we talk about is the 3D Mark Skydiver benchmark. And this measures the 3D graphics capabilities of the chips. Now, again, it's worth mentioning with this, we were given a Core i7 uh, product to review. This is a Core i5. The Core i7 came with an Iris Plus GPU. That's substantially more powerful than the HD620 that comes in this. Now, it's worth mentioning that the Core i5 model of this also comes with the HD620, but we have to sort of review what we're given. If you're going for talking about graphics, which again, this is sort of a key for games, obviously. If you're talking about graphics, 40% boost from Surface Pro 2017 to the Surface Pro 6. And if you own a Surface Pro 4, well, it's almost a no-brainer. It is an 81% boost. And this is something you're gonna to wanna to take advantage of. The final thing to think about is battery life. It's a key, it's a, a key metric for a laptop. You're obviously gonna to want to consider this when you're buying something like this. 
And here, you don't have as much wiggle room. Again, you've got the same chassis, so you're squishing the same battery in there. And the only thing you can really do is make a few adjustments as far as cooling is concerned and as far as uh, uh, the power consumption of the individual chips. So the battery life difference from this to this is relatively minor. It's about 12%. Again, though, with a Surface Pro 4, you're getting a substantial upgrade, and that's 57% probably actually a little bit more because your battery is going to degrade over time. You see that happen with your smartphone, the same thing happens in a tablet. Um, so that is a much more substantial difference. There's one other note to talk about when we're talking about the differences between the two, and that is the fact that this has a substantial fan noise attached to it. It always had. This, if you get the Core i5 model, is actually a fanless machine. Um, might not be a big difference, but remember Microsoft's point this time around is focus, and a fan noise is very distracting. It was on that. This, silent as a grave. A Core i7 though has that fan. I think what we're concluding on this, oh, let's actually, before we do talk about that, let's talk about a few alternatives. So if you own a Surface Pro, and you don't necessarily want to upgrade to the Surface Pro 6, what should you decide upon in addition? So we have three that I'd recommend. First of all, there's Lenovo's, the Mix 520 or the 720 and the ThinkPad X1 tablet, which is the third gen, or they're on the third generation. The mix is a great machine. The battery life is bad. Um, it's sort of at the bottom of the barrel. The ThinkPad X1 is a terrific machine, but it's a little bit more expensive to go along with that. I also like the HP Spectre devices, and the HP Spectre X2 is a bit more consumer friendly. It's got Bang & Olufsen speakers. Um, it's just a well-manufactured machine. Um, HP and Lenovo are pretty much tops of the heap at this point, along with the Surface machines. The bottom line is, is that the Surface Pro 2017 and the Surface Pro 6 are both solid machines. If I was a Surface Pro 4 owner, I would definitely upgrade to the Surface Pro 6. If I was a Surface Pro 2017 owner, is spending another thousand dollars for an 8% to 10% increase in various benchmarks worth it? I would probably say not, but again, it's your choice. The bottom line, the Surface Pro 6 is a solid machine that you should consider. However, there are alternatives out there. For our full review, check out PCWorld.com.